I'm often asked why I like ISSA compared to other personal training certification programs like ACE and NASM. ISSA makes it easier to understand and apply complex topics. I also like ISSA's online test because it's untimed and open book. That's great for coaches like me that suffer from test anxiety. Now ISSA has taken its program a step further by introducing the purpose-driven training model. Hi everyone, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. I'm a PSA ranked and rated figure skating coach. When I wanted to start training my skaters off the ice, I looked at all the different personal training certification programs. I even purchased the entire certification package from ACE. Halfway through the ACE course, I decided it wasn't the best program for me. So I invested in the ISSA Elite Trainer Package that included the Certified Personal Trainer course. My friends over at ISSA asked me to look at their new purpose-driven training model for the Certified Personal Trainer Program. I'm so excited to share it with you today because exercise programming is a massive component of every certified personal trainer's job. Knowing how to design a unique program for each individual client that is safe and effective can be overwhelming, especially for new trainers. The purpose-driven training model can help even the most experienced trainers enhance their approach and make a real impact on the lives of their clients. The model even allows clients to help co-create the program which we often refer to in figure skating as athlete-centered coaching, where we put the athlete's needs first. It's an approach that requires the coach to work to support the athlete's goals and facilitate progress so that an athlete is not passively working just to meet the coach's demands. Rather, athletes are striving to be active participants in their own journey. Of course, this requires the coach to take time to learn about the athlete's interests, strengths, and weaknesses, learning styles, goals, and barriers to training. In many ways, this requires more work from the coach, but as the athlete learns how to become the driver of their own development, the coach eventually takes an increasingly facilitative role. How does athlete-centered coaching in sports relate to ISSA's purpose-driven training model? They're really not that different. They both put the needs of the athlete or the client first and require the coach or trainer to take the time to learn about the athlete or the client's interests, strengths, and weaknesses, learning styles, goals, and barriers to training. I have used this approach for many years, both on and off the ice with my athletes. I found that it helps to focus on what motivates my athletes the most and keep them training. What ISSA has done with its purpose-driven training model is create a simple and effective method to capture exactly what your client wants and why they want to achieve it. You can use it to assess your client's current fitness readiness to move forward and put it all together in a program that perfectly aligns with their needs and goals. The purpose-driven training model is designed to help you deliver a great client experience with simple to use tools and guidelines. It can assist even the least experienced personal trainers in confidently designing exercise programs. I think it's a great tool, not only as a starting point for new trainers, but also great for experienced trainers looking to take their training to the next level. One of the most critical aspects of a personal trainer's role is creating a training routine that your clients can commit to. Often programming models can be too complex or require knowledge that your clients just may not have. But the purpose-driven training model is a holistic approach that meets clients where they are and provides you with the tools to adapt and find solutions that work for each individual person. The purpose-driven training model provides you with a framework that will help you to design customized training programs that are tailored to each individual client's needs and goals to help you deliver a great experience with simple to use tools and guidelines for program design, relationship building, even client retention and referrals. The purpose-driven training model consists of three main components, purpose, preference, and status. Purpose is the client's underlying motivation. If you understand the client's motivation, you can tailor your approach 
to align with their values and goals. Interviewing the client to discover information to help you better understand where they're coming from while building a strong, trusting relationship with each client is vital. Building rapport is one of the most critical elements of connecting with your clients, especially when you have limited time. Building trust quickly is the key to successfully building rapport. ISSA's Purpose Driven Training Model provides you with the five key components of building that trust. You'll establish the real reason why behind what they want to achieve. This is the foundational motivation driving their desire to change. Now the conversation is not just about how much weight to lose or how much bigger they want their muscles to be. It's about acknowledging what is truly driving toward that goal. In other words, their purpose. Why do they want to lose that weight or gain the muscle? Preference helps you determine your client's likes and dislikes. When it comes to exercise selection and coaching style, it also serves as a way to assess how receptive someone may be to trying a new or unfamiliar training method. When you understand your client's preference, you are better able to deliver a great overall experience while meeting the client where they are right now. Interviewing your clients is your first step in designing their custom program. Most clients want to achieve one of four common fitness goals, weight loss, muscle gain, athletic performance, or overall general health and well-being. Once you determine what their primary goal is, you can then explore why the goal is so important to them. This is their why, which is the deep motivation that fuels their choices. Helping someone connect their fitness goal to their why is a powerful step in helping you and your client. If your client prefers more structure, that likely means they will like conventional and familiar exercises performed in a linear fashion. For example, three sets of 10 for each exercise. If your client prefers flexibility, they may prefer more varied exercise routines. If your client is open to both, you'll have more freedom to choose what's most appropriate for the client's goal, the exercise, and the session with a mixture of familiar and new exercises. You'll also get insight into their knowledge of equipment in general. If they choose conventional, you'll want to build your programming with standard weight machines and cardio machines and other equipment such as free weights that the client already has experience with. Suppose your client is open to new things. In that case, you'll want to include less conventional equipment like suspension training, bozu balls, or any equipment your client may be inexperienced with. There are also questions that help you to identify your client's preferred coaching style and how they want their exercise experience to feel. Think about it. Some people want their experience to feel like a boot camp, while others desire a kinder, gentler, and quieter approach. You need to first understand the type of experience your client wants so that you can deliver it. Your client will appreciate the experience. You'll use this information to guide your exercise selection and style of training. If you don't provide your client with what they like or you give them what they don't like, there is an excellent chance you'll never see that client again. That's not only a disservice to you because you may have lost a client, it could also be a disservice to them because they may give up on their goals out of frustration. Status refers to your client's current fitness, health, and overall readiness to start an exercise program. You can utilize the movement observation guide to determine a client's readiness to perform movement patterns that are typical in exercise programming. This information assures that you choose movements that are safe for the client and are exercises that they want to do and will keep them engaged. They may even look forward to their workouts. Understanding a client's PPS will help you determine their why so that you can deliver the what in the form of a program that is truly customized for them. You can accomplish that by recognizing a client's current fitness status and understanding how they prefer to exercise. You can determine a general sense of your client's physical capabilities. You'll also assess their readiness to begin a consistent exercise program. Questions provide you with insight 
into your client's current fitness and overall activity level. These are tied to the movement observation guide for overall activity readiness. For example, if a client has been inactive or does not meet movement observation standards, you can start with slow, unloaded, and simple exercises. Over time, as your client progresses, it would become appropriate to add speed, load, and more complexity to help them meet their fitness goals. Suppose a client is active and experienced and meets the movement observation standards. In that case, you may be able to program relatively fast-loaded and more complex exercises. It also helps you to customize your programming. Let's say your client enjoys playing tennis. Incorporating tennis movements into their warm-up is a great way to emotionally connect the workout to the experience that they already enjoy. I do this all the time with my figure skaters and my hockey players. I incorporate movement patterns that help enhance their skating. I will often explain how a given glute exercise can help a skater improve their alignment in stroking, gliding, striding, steps like Mohawks and Choctaws, turns, centering spins, jump takeoffs and landings. Getting to know your client will also help you to uncover physical limitations such as injuries, pain, or joint issues. It's critical to factor this information into your decision-making exercise selection. Always keep in mind that that's not a replacement for the physical readiness questionnaire or PARQ. Whether you work independently like I do or for a fitness facility, potential clients should always fill out those forms before beginning a training program. At the end of your interview, when you've had more time to get to know your client and pay close attention to the words they continue to repeat, this is where it all comes back around to their purpose. The words they choose to say more than once can indicate the client's true motivation pain, and perceived barriers. That assists you in identifying what may have held the client back from reaching their goals in the past and how emotionally ready they are now to take the next step. The interview should take you about 15 to 20 minutes. Once you complete it, you'll give the client a 30 to 40 minute exercise experience aligned with their PPS. This is where you'll observe your client's movement so you can ensure that you design safe and effective exercise program that meets their needs by selecting exercises in the movement observation guide that align with their goals and preferences. This time-efficient first workout also allows you to administer an informal movement assessment. As they perform the exercises, you'll observe their movement readiness regarding each of the primary movement patterns, and you can determine their level of proficiency, which will help you and your clients establish an objective and measurable fitness goal. This is something that I knew all the time with new skaters on the ice. I have them perform basic skating skills and observe their form and proficiency before I can determine what areas require improvement to enhance the skills that they want to achieve. I often have skaters come to me that want to achieve a certain jump, like an axle. But when I observe their movement, I may find that they're having issues with their hedges, turns, or backspins. Now, those are required before you can achieve an axle consistently. Or hockey players often come to me when they hit a wall and can't make a higher level team. A common issue for hockey skaters is that they have issues with their backward skating or their ability to skate on one foot with ease. That can prevent a hockey player from progressing. So I work on the fundamentals before addressing what they think they need. I often take the skaters off the ice and do skater evaluations to help also determine deficits in their fitness level that we can work on off the ice in a strength and conditioning program. A certified personal trainer can use the ISSA movement observation guide to do that same thing with training any client, whether they're an athlete or not. After the exercise experience, you'll have enough information to provide professional recommendations and the next steps to your client.
and include options for which professional services you recommend. ISSA provides you with a workout plan or template that you can use with your clients and training guidelines by purpose, complete with modalities, modifiers, and training variables so that there's no guesswork. By incorporating these components into your coaching approach, using the ISSA's purpose-driven training model can help your clients achieve long-term success and sustainable behavioral change. A personal trainer must have a solid foundation in training, as well as the knowledge and skills to help clients achieve their fitness goals. By going through the steps of the purpose-driven model, you'll learn how to properly assess your clients design effective training programs, and guide them. Certified personal trainers not only design and implement safe exercise programs, they also educate clients about nutrition and motivate them to achieve their goals. The certification demonstrates your commitment to ongoing education and staying updated with the latest trends in the industry. Your expertise as a trainer can improve your client's overall health and well-being and help them to feel confident in their pursuit of fitness. Whether working one-on-one -on -one or leading a group fitness class, certified personal trainers positively impact their clients' lives. The goal of the purpose-driven training model is to simplify your program design process and empower you with the tools that you need to create meaningful, individualized, programs. You'll be able to take all the knowledge, skills, and abilities that you've learned in the Certified Personal Trainer course and apply them in a workout experience. Using these tools alongside your expertise, you'll be able to create experiences that provide your clients with what they really want while incorporating what they need. Remember, being a personal trainer is about more than just creating a workout plan. It's about empowering your clients to reach their full potential, just like being an athlete-centered coach. If you wanna become a certified personal trainer with ISSA's new purpose-driven training model, I have links in the description down below to ISSA's latest deals and discounts. I've also thoroughly reviewed all other aspects of ISSA's certified personal trainer course and there's a link to that right here. If this video helped you, please give it a like and share it with somebody else you think it could help. Just post it to your social media too. I post videos every week that can help you with your coaching, your fitness, nutrition, ultimately live your best life. So remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that you never miss a video. This is Amy, thank you for watching. Happy coaching, I will see you real soon, bye.